Hey there, this is Chad from Zombie Fight Shark, and this is part two of the Subtractor series, and this time we are talking about the filter. So right now, uh, if you haven't watched part one, then um, please go back, watch part one, and we talk about the oscillators, the your three oscillators, two right, standard oscillators and a noise oscillator right here. Um, we go through kind of very quickly all the functions of those and um, how you can make some really neat noises without touching anything else on here. If you don't know what anything here does or is, all you got to do is play with these things and you make some cool sounds. So... Uh, now we're going to talk about the filters. We've got two filters here. We're not going to talk about the envelopes. It's going to be for another section. Um, so we're just going to go with here's the default setting for the envelope, filter envelope. And we're not talking about LFOs. All this stuff can be affected, but we'll get into all that later. Um, we just want to talk about the basics of the functions of the filter. So I've launched the patch and I've played with a couple of settings. Um, I've got noise activated to add just a little bit of grit to the sound and then I've played with the frequency I boosted the resonance so I haven't done a whole lot here but um, just with playing with the filter and then adding this uh, adding the noise oscillator turning it on probably turn on this other oscillator too uh, while we're at it so just doing those things um, here's here's the sound So kind of a classic, you know, Moog sound, I guess. Um, that's what it makes me think of anyway. Um, and the subtractor is really good at those kinds of sounds because um, you, you got all your basics, but it's so much more powerful once you start playing with it. And that's the whole point of this series is to kind of demonstrate like, oh, there's so, so much untapped power in this thing uh, that a lot of people never realize because, yeah, there's lots of other fun things to play with out there um, that um, you don't have to coax out the sound or maybe some things you can you can make crazy stuff happen by flipping one switch. Well, subtractor can do that too, as long as you know it switches to flip. So let's reset the patch. So we're back to square one. All right. All right. So we'll turn on the second oscillator. We're going to, we're going to talk a little bit in the last one about synths. So we're going to, so get a little, little wobble going. All right, now we got a little little bit of noise added to it. There's two different low pass filters. I'm not going to explain what LP12 means and LP24 means. Um, you can look that up. There's plenty of videos to explain that already, uh, and other people are going to do a better job of explaining it than me. Uh, I'm just going to say that these are different. Um, so they're both low pass, but they have a different effect and they have a different quality of sound. So um, here we are. All right, so frequency simple enough this i mean it's self-explanatory as soon as you start playing with that knob what it actually does um then resonance um also not going to explain what resonance is that's for some somebody else's video but so it, you know it, i guess the easiest way to put it is it makes kind of a wetter sound you know you're going for acid base house thing something like that i don't know genres you know whatever that is um so that's what those two do you know not nothing crazy right um so and this is a the low pass it's a, a steeper wave on the uh, on the cut um and again i'm not gonna explain what that means i'm probably saying it wrong anyway um but you can hear a little bit of a sound difference you can hear how it kind of affects it differently there so just be aware those are different uh band pass so it's cutting you know this wherever your frequency here is centered that's the that's the band or the general area it's kind of in the shape of a bell that is passing through so so the low end is passing through there now the higher end is passing through there and that bandpass filter is really helpful you know when you're trying to shape your sound of course you can do it with eq but another very easy way to do it is using the bandpass so on a bass you can you can change that where it's just you're just down towards the bottom so only the lower frequencies are going to pass through and 
and that way you don't have any of that upper end stuff or on the flip side of that is if you're doing a lead it's really great for leads and mids to make sure that you know you're not kind of polluting the rest of the track with a bunch of frequencies from you know really awesome sound but you really only need one part of that frequency wave so there's your band pass um, high pass opposite of low pass so and again um, not going to go into what a high pass is just it's the opposite of a low pass um, generally speaking and is I'm going to say one of the most useful in terms of being, uh, if you use it in a utilitarian way and to shape your sound as a whole, then it can be one of the most helpful uh, filters that is in this whole thing. Um, and then last one, notch. So it's cutting out a little notch of sound. As, as you're sweeping it, it's, it's cutting out a little piece of the sound. And it's real subtle on subtractor. It's um, sometimes some some instruments you play with a notch filter, and it's very obvious. Um, it, it's not nearly as obvious on subtractor as some other things. But you can kind of hear it's cutting out some of the high end, right where you know if you imagine this is the high end, this is your upper end of the frequencies. You can kind of hear it cut out those frequencies and it gets up there, so it can help kind of clean up some sounds. So, um, so there's all your, all your different types of filters. Um, and I uh, just encourage you to play with them because, uh, it can change whatever your, whatever sound you're going for, or if you're just kind of doodling around with it and just seeing what kind of cool sounds you can come up with, um, which I've spent hours and hours doing, then once you start playing with these, then that can open up a lot of doors. Um, this keyboard knob affects how um it if you have this turned up all the way when you're playing on the lower lower notes lower into the keyboard then the filter is going to react differently than it will on the higher notes so something like this And depending on which of these filters and really a lot of other stuff that can be a very noticeable difference or it can be very subtle. Right now it's very subtle. If as you move up the keyboard, you're wanting the filter to change in character as you move up, then that's what that knob is for. Um, and like I said, depending on which type and several other factors, sometimes that matters, sometimes it, you may not even notice. Um, so next you got so there's two filters, right? Filter two, and it can run completely independent of filter one, where you got, you know, let's say you got everything tweaked out perfectly here, and then you're like, you know what? I just want to cut some high end. And that's what it does. So it's a low pass, and it's just cutting out some additional frequencies. Or, you can link it to filter one. And sometimes it's hard to, it, it's hard to tell sometimes what it's actually doing when, when you link it. Uh, sometimes it's real obvious. Again, depends on the sound, depends on other variables. But when you turn that, that resonance up, then you can kind of start to notice what it's doing to the sound. It's a little more obvious. So that can be a subtle change, but it's a great way to shape the sound a little bit additionally. So if we're here and then so see so when I get all the way down, you can hear it taking effect. So it's it's affecting this, it's affecting the other filter, but it's again in a very subtle way. Um, and then same thing with the resonance. It's it, these when you start adding resonance on top of resonance, uh, danger because you very quickly can get into some some it'll 
you're going to clip the sound and digital clipping and it's not the pretty kind of clipping. So just watch out when you're playing with both of these resonance uh, sliders and make sure you don't, uh, you, you, you don't go crazy with them and, unless you're going for like pure noise because they're great for that. Um, all right, that's it for filters. And um, next time we're going to discuss the filter envelope, the amp envelope, because um, those are still there. These are just we're going to build on the basics um, without going too fast uh, and too far ahead too fast. So um, thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.